Throw that cap away, ain't gonna need it. Cheers. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to Beer and Beauty. Today's libation of the day is not a beer, but instead a wine. Yesterday I went to uh, Atkins Farm, which is a beloved country store out here in Western Massachusetts, and they were having a wine tasting. And out of all six wines I tasted, this one was my favorite. So this is Layer Cake Malbec from Mendoza, Argentina, Ditch 2017. Um, and they were having it on sale, so I picked up a bottle of this and a couple other bottles because I think I'm going to cut back on beer next couple weeks, but you don't need to know about that. Delicious. I highly recommend this wine. And it doesn't break the budget, but it's delicious. It's nice and deep, but also fruity, dry, but not too dry. It's like a nice, like, I don't know. I really love Malbecs. So I think they're just kind of like a delicious middle of the road kind of red wine for your dry wine kind of lover out there in the world. Cheers to that. But today's video, I hope I have time to shoot it all today because it's going to take me a while to go through everything. But it's, it's my long-awaited professional makeup kit video. Hooray! I'm showing you guys my professional freelance makeup kit. This is the makeup that I take with me to gigs where I do bridal clients and special event clients. Uh, prom makeup, pageant makeup, photo shoot makeup, that kind of stuff. I mostly do women, but sometimes I do men. I don't think I've ever done makeup for a non-binary friend, but um, I'm sure I could do that too. I'll link down below my special effects kit and my body painting kit. Those are different, uh, but today we're just going to be going over what I use for special events, such as bridal events, uh, weddings, prom, um, holiday events, sometimes Christmas parties, New Year's Eve, Halloween, Eve, sometimes even Halloween if I'm doing something more glam for somebody. Usually on Halloween I'll, I'll probably bring both this kit and my special effects kit. So check out my special effects kit video if you want to see that end of things. But today we're going to talk about what I keep in my professional freelance makeup kit. And I am planning on doing a whole overhaul of it uh, early next year in 2020, so keep your eye out for that. Maybe subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see that when it comes out, but right now, this is the kit I've been working with for the past two years. Um, it's, you know, there's certain things I switch in and out, but this is the stuff that I generally bring to most gigs. I don't have a ton of like colorful palettes or anything like that that I generally take to all gigs, be uh, but I will bring them if the client is just like, Today I'd like to do a blue eye look, so I bring all my favorite blue eyeshadows with me, but normally I, I just keep it to the rosies and the champagnes and the, and the neutrals, basically, and the taupes. People love a nice rosy glow. I actually, <laughs> I tried to throw this face together for this video really quickly, but it is strangely pretty bridal, pretty special event-ish, so something like this would be something I might do on a client. Without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so first off, I'm exposing some of my secrets here. You get a little sneak peek at what my apartment looks like and my silly setup that I need to change. Uh, but that's my backdrop up there. And first I wanted to show you guys the actual cases that everything comes in. So, you may recognize this case on the bottom, this like rolling suitcase portion. That's my Zuka flyer, so that is the main um, component that I store all my supplies in. I think I'll probably link this down below. Um, I think you can get it on Amazon, if so, I think I'll leave a link down below. And then also a travel, um, I forget what this bag is called. It's a really awesome bag for makeup artists and for travel, especially if you're somebody that likes to travel with a lot of things. I'll show you what's inside this bag, but that's where I keep my concealers and foundations and um, compacts and stuff. And this one's where I keep my palettes, uh, my brushes. And then on the side here is my Morphe set bag. Um, you don't need to get like a Morphe bag or anything like that. They're all kind of the same. All the different set bags are the same. You just basically go with whatever style you want. When I bought this one, like the clear set bags were really in. And I guess there is a 
element of convenience being able to see right into it but um, I used to just use the Zuka and this set bag and I used to keep like a pun bunch of powders and q-tips and mascara wands and stuff in here but nowadays I just kind of take it with me and I use it as a spill off bag to whatever when I'm packing up quickly can't fit in the, into these two I stick it in this this one which is what why this big tub of brushes isn't in here but um, I don't always do uh, airbrush makeup events but this is where I keep my airbrush tattoo supplies so I think what I'll do next is I'll unpack everything and I'll show you what it all looks like inside. I'm gonna set it up to show you what I set up would look like on the job, basically. Okay, so something I did forget to mention is that this um, smaller bag has this convenient little pocket. So when you're rolling around with this guy, you can stick this little band behind your rolling thingy so you can kind of travel with it like that. And another thing about the flyer that was a big contributing portion to why I wanted to buy it is because this portion right here is strong enough to sit on. So if you were a makeup artist that flies a lot, it might be really convenient to have this because it's full because it's carry-on size and it would be convenient to have with you at airports just in case you're ever waiting to board a plane and you're wearing heels and you got nowhere to, you really like to sit. You could sit on this guy, so that's convenient and cool. And I also decided to that it might be cool and con convenient for us, for you guys to see how I unpack it or how I pack it. So, on top, I ha I always keep a towel. It's not always exact packed exactly the same way, but it's usually along these lines. So these two bags have like different single glitters and stuff in them. So those usually go on top or just in the corners wherever they fit. This top bag here has different eye stuff and disposables. Like I have like like tweezers and stuff in there. This bag right here, this little Marc Jacobs little cutie, has disposables in it, which I'll show you when I'm all unpacked. And this bag over here has some extra palettes. And then usually I have some sort of brush roll in there like that. It's very tat Tetris in there. This bag has all my setting sprays and a handful of primers in it and my toners and stuff like that, some skincare. And this bag has most of my main palettes. That's like my go-to palettes goes in there. Usually a couple bigger palettes that won't fit anywhere will go right there. And the last bag is lip stuff. When I take all that out, it's empty. <laughs> and as you can see, it's been loved. I don't really keep much in these other pockets down here. I do sometimes have cards in these pockets. Yeah. Oh, those aren't even mine. Whose are those? Oh, those are... Yeah, one of my clients also does like home home elder care and stuff, so she gave me a bunch of her cards. On this side, I used to have like special effects palettes and stuff in here. Got one more extra palette in there. Oh, yes. Now, here's some of my cards. These are my body special effects face painting cards, and these are my makeup cards. All right guys, first I wanted to show you how the smaller bag looks before I show you how I unpack it, but this is what it looks like on the inside. It's got all these different compartments, and this is where a lot of my face products come from. So first off, when I go to unpack my kit, I lay down my towel, which is already down here. And then I keep like mixing palettes right in the center there and I lay those down on the towel too. And a lot of the stuff I, I work out of right in here. And I guess I'll go ahead and talk about what's in here in order from by starting where I would start with the face. So actually first I would tone it. So my, my toner is in my other bag that I showed you earlier, but I keep most of my primers back here. So I have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I love this primer to use as like a primer in itself. I am wearing it out of my face today. But also um, I use it to clean up um, mistakes uh, kind of like as a little magic eraser. It's not quite, it doesn't work quite the same as like a makeup remover. It, it doesn't move around the makeup underneath quite as much as, as like say a makeup remover would. Like a makeup remover would straight up just take everything off. This kind of just buffs away some of the, my mistakes. So I love that for that. I also have a Benefit Professional in here. That one's almost all gone. This is one of my favorite smoothing primers. This is the Makeup Forever Step 1 smoothing primer. NYX Angel Veil. 
There's the NYX Angel Veil. Um, my Embryo Lease for drier folk. This is actually the main primer I use for most of my dry clients, uh, the Smashbox Primerizer. This is just a mini. Minis are nice for keeping inside your kit. Um, another Makeup Forever Step 1 primer. I don't know, I'll use this one if I'm not feeling using this one, if I'm trying to save this one for whatever reason. Ooh, it's a Kiehl's Eucalyptus Lip Balm. I believe this one dries matte, so this is a nice lip balm to use on male grooming clients who don't like a shiny look to their lip balm, but have chapped lips, so they need they need a little TLC. Love that. Smashbox Redness Reducing Primer. This is definitely come in handy for folks that have a little bit more redness. A sample vial of the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. A beautiful lum uh, luminous primer. This one I haven't used it quite a quite much, but I was just always curious about it, so I wanted to hold on to it. A sample size of the Tarte Poreless Primer. Just another like pore filling primer. I'm just curious what it feels like. Yeah, it's very similar to the Smashbox, maybe a little thicker. And in, in here I have a couple more primers back here. I got the Tarte Base Tape, Mac Strobe Cream. This one I think is in the pink shade. Japanesque Velvet Touch Primer. This is very similar to the Smashbox photo, photo finish as well. A small sample size, almost all gone, of uh, the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I'm gonna get more of this stuff. I really like this primer. But I use it so sparingly because I have very little of it, so I don't, like, it takes me forever to use it up because I'm so, like, careful with it. A little sample size of the Hourglass Velvet Touch Mineral Veil Primer. Really nice. It pairs really nicely with Vanish Stick Foundation. And this is the Smashbox Photo Finish Radiance Foundation. Not my favorite luminous found, uh, primer, but it's okay. Okay, so I have a couple shades of the Makeup Forever HD Sticks Stick Foundations in here. Y215 and the Y315. I don't use these on clients too, too often. I tend to grav gravitate towards the other ones, but once in a while. Somebody's like really dry or wants like a really skin-like finish. And I've got two Dior Skin Forever foundations. These are beautiful bridal foundations. Okay, so over here I have all my foundations. These are all my Makeup Forever HD foundations. These are my go-to for most events, honestly. Once in a while, if my clients are a little oilier, I'll use the Pro Matte Infallible, especially for my prom girls, I'll use the Pro Matte. For my weddings that are in like super hot, humid days, I'll use the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus foundation, and I have the shades 20, 25, and 30, um, but I don't actually use these too much. I'll, I'll use these on all skin types. The Makeup Forever H Ultra HD, I'll use on all skin types. My most used are probably 225 gets used a ton, 365 is, uh, it's good for medium skin tones, I don't use 415 too often. This one's, this bottle's half gone, but this is R230, I don't think of myself as somebody that uses this a ton, but this bottle's half gone, so that counts for something. Y205 is a little bit on the light side, I don't use that one that often. 370, I don't use that one that often. This one, I saw somebody in their own uh, makeup kit videos mention this one and how essential it is for their pink girls. This is R240 or the 107. I've never used this. I don't ever have anybody this pink, so I wouldn't recommend getting that one. But this one's my shade, and this one's almost all gone, and I've used up one other one before of this one. But this is the one 120. And I have one more over here. 335, that one does get used quite a bit. That's a pretty popular shade for medium skin tones. And I have one deep one here. This is the 175 or five R510. And I also have a little tiny mini, and this one's almost gone, all gone too. This is the Y445. I've gotten pretty, like, acquainted with the shade range of these. And most, I've noticed that most people are a little bit yellow. Or if they want to be, look tan, then they tend to, you know, if they get a spray tan, then the spray tan tends to be a little bit yellow. So most of these are pretty yellow toned. A few of them are red toned, or AKA pink toned. Um, but yeah, this is really excellent. It's really skin like, but also super full coverage. It uh, works on all skin types, dry, as well as oily, um, and it's, it looks great in photos. So this is a really good go-to foundation. 
I think this is probably going to be the liquid foundation that I stick with in my kit. I might experiment with doing... <laughs> I really love the Dior skin, but these are so much more expensive. These are expensive too. These are like 40 bucks. These are 60 bucks. I'm, I, I might consider a different foundation. These are all infallible pro mattes. I do have one little Mac Studio Fix Fluid, but I don't use that one much. I don't like the, I don't like the undertone of this one. This one's really yellow. I have two NYX uh, foundation mixers, a, a white one and a deep one. I don't think I've ever opened these, so I might, I don't know, pass these on. We'll see. I have to do a makeup declutter really badly. Ooh, one more primer. This is a really lovely pore filling primer. This is this uh, Touch and Soul No Pore Bloom. It's no pore bloom, guys. Um, I have a couple foundation samples in here. I just think, yeah, I've never used these, but just in case, just in case I need one of these colors. There they are. More cards that I ha have from like other hairstylists that I've worked with. These are my two RCMA Vincent Kehoe palettes. If you are looking to have a really comprehensive shade range, but you don't want to buy a bunch of different, like a bunch of different bottles of stuff, this is a really good way to start building your kit, getting these two RCMA Makeup palettes. I believe Sir John uses this foundation on Beyonce. So this is the VK10. Looks like this. I want to use a lot more. Candy Johnson uses these to do like really transformative makeup looks. And this one's the VK11. That one got a little bit more love than the other one. Really long wearing skin like super high coverage foundations. But you know you have to like cream foundations to enjoy these. So I think that's what my um, issue with them was. I was I'm not, haven't been super into creams, so that's why I don't reach for, for those things. Then. This pocket over here has some foundation samples. I never reach for these though. You can use these to like wipe down lipsticks or different things to keep them sanitized. This little powder over here is the RCMA powder, but I, I hate the packaging that it comes in. It's also big and bulky, so I put a little bit into this like tiny little Laura Mae Morse powder in here, but this is the RCMA No Color Translucent Powder. Looks like that. Up here is all my concealers, and they're kind of haphazard in here. I have to, I have to organize these. I used to have them organized by brand. They're still kind of organized by brand, but... This first rubber band situation has the Maybelline Fit Me concealers. I never really use these just because I tend to gravitate for something more full coverage. And if I'm looking for something more skin-like, that's not what I ended up using. For the longest time, I just had these Makeup Forever HD concealers. These are nice. They're pretty creasy, so you just kind of have to set them down quite a bit. But they can be used as a foundation too, and some of them are almost all gone. When they're all used up, I won't be replacing these again. Oh, this is a NARS highlight that I still have never tried. And then I have a bunch of Shape Tape concealers. I just have like a nice good range. I almost never use the Rich, honestly. If I were to use a concealer on a client that's got a deeper skin tone, I'm more liable to use the NARS. I just have the four NARS Radiant Creamy Concealers in their mini forms, which is fine for me to have the minis because I have all of these in full size and I have all these in full size. I tend to use these so often that they're almost all, all gone. Like these two are definitely all completely kicked. Caramel's getting down there and even hazelnut's getting down there too. These are just really commonly used colors. That's why they're available in the, in the minis. I got vanilla, caramel, custard, and hazelnut over here. And yeah, these are well loved and almost all gone. And I think when it comes time for me to replace this entire kit, I might just get all NARS concealers because there's something about deeper skin tones. This is one of the only concealers that will stick to their skin. Tarte is that the Tarte Shape Tape is actually pretty good, like that too. But it's this one's a little bit drier and more full coverage. This one's a little bit more skin like, but it's still super full coverage and not so creasy and works really well on both oily and dry skin. But this one's kind of like, this one's a little harsh on drier skin in my experience. And it's, you know, a lot of people that are getting their makeup done for the first time, they don't want something this full coverage. This can be sheared out. The NARS tends to be sheared out a little bit more. So yeah, those are like my two favorites to go to for concealers in the kit. 
but something that is totally essential, like something I often can't live without is my uh, Touche Clock Concealers from YSL. And I have the colors 2, 4.5, and 3.5. And these are essential for people with really dehydrated dry skin or more mature, mature skin. Like for folks that really don't want a ton of coverage, maybe just a little bit of lightness around the eyes to cancel out the dark circles. This is really beautiful and skin-like. And I you tend to use these to, to kind of tone down the full coverage nature of these and kind of make them more brightening. I tend to use like mix these in to other concealers a lot to just give me the finish that I'm looking for. Makeup is an art. You mix things to get the results you want. And then I have a couple like loose singles of I have two little tiny minis of Tarte Shape Tapes. And then I have one ColourPop No Filter, one Kat Von D Super White Concealer. I've never opened, I, actually I did use this on like a Halloween look once. And a couple like concealers that I got as gratis at Sephora back when I used to work there. Um, I do have a couple MAC Pro Longwear Concealers. I don't use these as often. I'll, I'm more inclined to use these on myself rather than on clients. Actually, once in a while I will. This is kind of like an in-between kind of concealer. It's not quite as full coverage as the sharp Shape Tapes, but not as skin-like as the NARS Radiant Creamies, and not as brightening as the Touche Claws. This is probably like my third favorite. Oh, and I didn't even mention this one. I really love the Naked... This is the only one of the Naked Skin concealers I have, but I can't believe people forgot about this concealer so much. This is the most hydrating concealer available, I think, as, as far as I know. I've never tried a concealer that was more moisturizing than this one, and it's excellent for mature skin, skin and part skin like my skin tends to. So I got a couple pretty vocal products here, like a nice highlighter. This is a really beautiful, like, champagne-y with a rosy shift. I love this blush that I got out of a BoxyCharm. This is the another pretty vulgar blush. Everybody got, like, a hot pink one. I got really lucky by getting this, like, more nude, neutral kind of. It's called Hush Blush. It just kind of gets lodged over here where I can't really even see them. So I, for I tend to forget about those. I got my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This is a nice cool tone bronzer that I love to use sometimes when I'm trying to steer away from soup, something that's super warm. This is a Beauty Crop Bronzer. This is a mini of the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder, but I think this one's like a luminous finish one because it's super gold looking. And I actually went in to use it on a client the, uh, like a couple months ago because uh, I need to co to cover up a zit and I went to go set it once I covered it up and it just like had all this shimmer in it. So it just kind of made that zit all shimmery and it was not that cute. It I don't know, I'm trying to play around with this a little bit more to see what my real thoughts about it are because it's, it's got such a really gold luminous finish. It's not quite the luminous finish that, say, like an hourglass ambient lighting powder would give off. This one's way golder, so it would probably work well for somebody, but um, I still haven't figured out how to use that quite yet. Got two Artist Couture highlighters. This one's Summer Haze. This one's so beautiful for, like, light to medium skin tones. Maybe I actually haven't tried to use it on a deep skin tone, but it might be beautiful on that one, too. This is such a this one's in the shade Purple Dream. Nice, pretty little purple highlighter if you're into that. Back here, I've got some setting powders that I've never used. I got these from when I was going to cinema makeup school. They said that we were going to need them. I've never ended up using them. But we got an extra oil controlling loose face powder. Actually, I, could, I should have probably tried to break this out during some summer weddings I had that were super humid. But And then we got an under eye brightening powder. Haven't tried to use those ever before. I should try. I should try them sometime. Okay, so let, I'm gonna put everything back here. All right. So now we're down to the last couple sections, which are arguably some of the most fun sections. So this is where I keep a bunch of my compacts. They're kind of all haphazard in their blushes, bronzers, highlights, setting powders, different things. Um, so the first one is my Makeup Forever, like a little duo that's like this. These are super pretty. For some reason, I coveted this highlighter for so long and I bought it in this mini and I never use it. Figures. Okay, so this is kind of like, might be a kit must have because it just works with so many skin tones. 
eyelash glue or something stuck to it. But this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy Highlighter. This is a beautiful highlighter that works on every skin tone and it's so blingy. It can be really like a lit from within highlighter or it could be a really blingy highlighter. And yes, I use this on like really deep skin like skin tones and it still works. It's still beautiful. It's it's very shiny, very blingy, but it doesn't look ashy or bad or anything like that. I love this Laura Geller blush. This is in Tropic Hues. It looks beautiful. I love this Note blush. This is a really gorgeous like peachy shade. Super pigmented. This is called Desert Rose. So you have to really kind of go in with a light hand, but I just love the color so much. So I keep it in there and sometimes Folks just need a, like a peachy blush in their life. I got two of the Dust of Colors Desi and Katie collection highlights. The first time around, the Fuego was sold out. So I was only able to get Marame, but this one's really beautiful. It's got a wet look. I love it. It's excellent for medium skin tones and even darker skin tones. And then Fuego is like a, a beautiful highlight that's uh, for great for medium to light to medium skin tones. People have said that it's really similar to the Amrezy. Let's go ahead and swatch them side by side. When you look at them side by side, they look nothing alike. Uh, I, I think they're close, but they're not like exact dupes. Look at that. Oh, she's shiny. Yeah, um, Fuego to me seems more gold and darker. The Amrezy highlight is more champagne-y, more moonstone-y, looks different. Actually, speaking of moonstone-y, Here's Becca Moonstone. I just keep the mini. I don't, I'm nowhere near hitting pan on it, even though I use it all the time. So I think the mini is fine. You don't need the full size, but I'm just interested to see what this one compares to. Yeah, this is a lot more bridal looking, a lot more subtle. These are, these other two are a little bit more blingy. You know what? While we're here, we're just having fun at this point. I just want to swatch this Makeup Forever one. Ooh, that one's pretty close to Fuego, actually. I mean, this one's a little bit more gold. It looks a little bit different, but they're really close, honestly. That's actually the closer dupe to Fuego rather than the Emreezy. Got some Becca Champagne Pop. Yep, that's my Becca Champagne Pop. She's a little beat up. She got shattered and I had to repress her and now she's falling apart again. I use her a lot. As you can see, this is a well-loved palette. Even after I've repressed her, I still dip into this one a ton. That one's really close to Fuego. It's a little bit more champagne-y. I can't wait to do a highlighter declutter. Um, I'm done highlight swatching highlighters at this point. I'll swatch more when I actually do an actual highlight declutter, which I need to do, but. Um, Becca Sh Pearl, which is one I use on super light skin tones and for just icy looking looks. Oh, we have a random primer in here. This is the mini of the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I used it like twice when I first got it. I just have too many primers, that's the thing. This is a lovely primer, but it, with all these primers, I just never end up using it. Maybe if I put it in, its, in the actual primer location, I'll use it more. This is Milani Luminoso, absolutely stunning, peachy blush, and a cult classic with good reason. It's almost kind of a highlighter, because it's so shiny, but love that one. I've got these two Essence blushes. These are actually really nice, even though they're like $3 each, but I love these. These are just Satin Touch blushes and Satin Love and Satin Coral. Back here is MAC Give Me Sun, a bronzer I bought because of Jaclyn Hill. This is the one that she would just constantly use all the time for a long time, but it's very warm, very warm. If you're into that kind of thing, you might love it, but I tend to be kind of scared of it because it's, very warm. It's very orange. So I got um, two of the Charlotte Tilbury F Airbrush Flawless Finish setting powders. These are essential, essential for dry skinned bridal clients and for mature skin clients. Uh, powders you can use to set their face without like making them look really dry and cakey. As you can see, this one's got quite a bit of pan. This is the fair um, and this one's the medium. I actually bought the medium first by accident, meaning to buy the fair. It was a little too dark for me, definitely deepened up my skin tone, but I decided to keep it because there's not a ton of product in these, honestly. I never hit pan on anything and I hit pan on this without trying. So that just kind of speaks to how little product there is in here, but it. I also do use it to death because I love it. It's such a pressed, the most finely milled pressed setting powder I've ever tried myself. So let's put all these babies back. 
Okay, so back here we got one of my favorite blushes of all time. This is Becca Flower Child. I love her. She works in so many light to medium skin tones. It is amazing. She, it is a gorgeous blush, I love it. And then I have two bronzers. The two Chocolate Soleil bronzers. I've got the Deep Tan Matte Bronzer. It looks like that. Smells like chocolate. <laughs> and this one's the Medium Deep Matte Bronzer. This one's got a, quite a bit of pang in. Very well loved bronzer. Then, oh, I also have the Milk Chocolate bro Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. I hardly ever dip into it though because I have Hula Light in a palette somewhere and that's usually the, the light bronzer that I will go to use on somebody that's especially fat. Uh, but I also have Hula from Benefit Hula. It's also got a, quite a bit of pan. Um, really, actually, there's a reason this is a cult classic bronzer. It works really well as a bronzer and as a contour. Nice multi-purpose product. Back here is just like a tiny little compact compartment. Um, I got my tiny Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This one's almost all gone. And honestly, this packaging on the minis kind of sucks. It's hard to get enough powder to come out of here. It only disperses like the tiniest amount. I have to like... Like I have to slap it around to get the powder to come out. I guess that kind of worked. I think I just have to take out the stopper. That's what needs to happen. So you can use up the rest of it. Um, back here I have my three NARS mini blushes. Um, I have NARS Orgasm, which is a nice classic. Quite a bit, but it's nowhere near hitting pan, so another instance of where the, the mini is plenty, honestly. Here's Deep Throw, another classic. And this one's called Gulu. This came as like a, like a reward for hitting Rouge. You got like your Rouge card at Sephora, and then you got this blush, which is actually a really nice mauve blush. Works nicely on deeper, medium to deep skin tones. Even light skin tones for like a winter flush kind of look. And then I have um, Becca Opal, just a mini. This one's pretty well loved too. Then I have four of the mini Tarte blushes. I need to go through these and decide <laughs> if they're even that different. So this one's in the shade Feisty. I think all of these came free, either as like a Sephora perk or a gratis or a Sephora birthday gift. So that's Feisty. This one's in the shade Pate. I think this was like the birthday gift. I don't use it a ton, but actually I should. It's a little bit more mauve This is the shade Peaceful. It's a lot, it's pretty glittery. And we also have Quirky. Damn, these are all so similar. That's why I never know which one to use because they're this is a little more, these are these two are really close, honestly. Gotta do a declutter real soon. That's coming. Blush declutter is coming. I love this highlight. This is a Hustla Baby highlight from Fenty Beauty. Really beautiful, like peachy golden highlighter. When, it, when you swatch it in the hand, it looks pretty similar to the other ones, but this one's much peachier golden. I, I, I don't know. I think this one's pretty unique. I love that one. So up here in these pockets, I have like eyeliners, mascaras, and brow products. So up here I have a brow whizzes and also a couple of the NYX micro brow pencils. They're very similar to the Anastasia brow whizzes. I have one brow definer in here. These are an essential tool. A lot of people just use the brow powder palettes, but I find that like these just offer a lot more structure. I've just gotten to know the colors really well. Over here we have a couple colorful Urban Decay liquid eyeliners that I never use. We have a couple mascaras back here. Oh, I forgot this was back here. See, this is why it's good to go through your stuff for a while. I also have some Anastasia brow stencils back here, just in case. I hardly ever use those, but just in case. I use the base once in a while, but I don't use, I think this is probably a dried out mascara. I probably should have a couple colorful eyeliners here from Sigma. Don't use those too often. Honestly, it's usually just black and brown, but. And once, once in a while, like white or nude, but. Got a little mix of eyeliners in here. Got my Charlotte Tilbury uh, Brightener. That one's really an essential nude one. That's actually my go-to nude. For I've been kind of on the lookout for a nude eyeliner for a while and I finally found it. This is the one. And I got a NYX white eyeliner. A Decay Perversion highlighter is a nice dark one. Beautiful coal eyeliner is the Hourglass 
obsidian one. My go-to for really dark smoldering eyes is this MAC Cole eyeliner and I have it in the shade Smolder and I also have it in the brown. I think it's called Teddy. Yes, I also have Teddy and I have a couple in there that are mixed with some NARS, some stuff I got in BoxyCharms, uh, Marc Jacobs is in there. I have a couple liquid eyeliners in here. These are a little bit harder to sanitize and when you sanitize them it makes them dry out a lot faster because you kind of have to douse them in alcohol but you can sanitize them, it does work. And because I have a few in here I don't worry about them drying out plus I don't use them that often in here but I've got NYX Epic Ink Liner which has got to be thrown away because it's all dried out. Most of these are dried out. Um, but my go-to these days are the Hank and Henry. This I'm loving. I love this new one. And the Clinique Pretty Easy. These are two really good liquid eyeliners with a hair tip. Highly recommend. Then I have a couple... These are my go-to like kit mascaras. Um, I have a Too Faced Better Than Sex because it just kind of like goes nicely with these Voluminous Lash Paradise L'Oreal mascaras. I put the date on them to know when I open this. It's probably just about time to replace them. But then again, I've only done like... Eh, actually, now that I think about it, it's been like 10 gigs. But um, this is the waterproof one, which is a, the one I usually use on mom brides. And this one actually, I barely use it. It's probably, yeah, it looks like it's starting to dry, but it's still pretty wet. That's the vol Voluminous Slash Paradise. And this is a new serious favorite. This is the Essence Lash Princess. Beautiful mascara. Down here, I almost forgot, is a bunch of Anastasia Brow Concealer Sticks. I almost never use these because I almost never cut brows, so they just kind of live in there. I have a couple NYX eyeshadow bases, the Jumbo Eye Pencils, and the Milk Cottage Cheese, and Black Bean. And then up here, we, oh, we got some colorful eyeliners, and these are all waterproof too, these. Makeup Forever Aqua XL eyeliners. These are the most waterproof eyeliners available on the market. And I, as you can see, I'm pretty low down on my M10. I use this one on most of my clients because it is so waterproof and so nonsense proof. It's more than half gone. Back here, we have a mirror that I never use. I don't know where I got this mirror, actually. It's a Hot Tools mirror. I must have gotten it free with like a Ulta purchase or something like that. But that's that section up top, and then when you close it, there's one more section up here. Then I'll go ahead and just show you now. But that's where I cut, keep a couple more of my posables. Up here I have a bunch of lashes. So up here I keep a bunch of lashes. I sell these for like $10 a set if anybody ever ends up wanting one, but the Demi Wispies are definitely an essential. I use these on most people. And these are just the regular Wispies. They're a little bit bigger. And then the, these Kiss Lashes are pretty close, but a little bit longer and a little bit more separated. But I like to have all these different styles on hand because I feel like lashes are a nice area to have a lot of variety in. These are the Glamour ones, the 105s from Ardell. These are more lengthening. 101 Demis from Ardell are more thickening. These nat these are the Naturals from Ardell. These come in handy. These are nice uh, beginner lashes for somebody that's never worn them before. They don't have a ton of lashes, but they definitely need some more lashes. So, but they don't want to go. They're too. They're a little scared. The naturals are perfect. Oh, we got a set of faux mink lashes there too from Ardell. And this last pack, uh, pocket has, I think, singles. Oh, and a thing of mints. Always need mints. Um, so we got these silicone mascara wands so long ago and they just, I never use them because they're so weird. Uh, but we got the cherry, red cherry singles, Mardell singles, almost, actually this pack is almost all gone. And some mega flare individuals. I, I never use singles just because, I don't know, I have grown accustomed to the to the strip lashes. Down here I also have a cape just in case. I have a package of beauty, uh, like makeup wedges. I actually do use these to like spread out a thick primer once in a while. Um, some cotton rounds and a package of wipes. I use these to like clean my hands, clean my palettes with. And in this pocket down here is a big mirror that I never use, which I should actually use because you can actually 
stand it up so you can see. There you are. You can see yourself. So that is that first bag. Yeah, that's the first bag. So let me show you what's in the second bag. Okay, so this is more or less how I tend to set up some of my setup whenever I'm on the job. It always kind of varies depending on how much space I have, but this is more or less what it looks like. I always have my two big brush tubs up front. Just kind of open them up like this. All my face brushes are in this one, this bigger one, and my eye brushes are in this smaller one. And whenever I use a brush, I'll put it in one of the small, like the empty ends. And then I just leave this, put all my clean brushes into one at the end of the gig and and all my dirty brush into the other. I'll just kind of like transfer them at the end. But that's more or less what they look like. These are all still clean. And this, I have my Bioderma, which I use on everybody to clean off their face before I start their makeup. I use it on most people. Sometimes if people are just like, I just put, did a full skincare routine, guarantee, you know, they assure me that I work, it's gonna work with their makeup, then that's fine. Then I just won't clean off their face and I'll just go in and maybe put on a primer or something and then go in and do their makeup. I also have this bottle of 99% alcohol, which I use to sanitize my eyeliners brow pencils, anything that I use that directly goes on people's faces. This is a Temp2 primer that I use, I almost never use anymore because there's just so many other great primers out there. I haven't used these a ton, but these are two primers that I got in BoxyCharms recently. The No Problem Prime Essence and the Wander Glow Ahead Illuminating, Illuminating Face Primer. But largely this bag is mostly setting sprays, but I do have my hand sanitizer that I use before I start. Uh, this is my the Professional Matte Rescue Mattifying Primer from Benefit. I don't have oily skin, but I use this on all my oily clients and I've had good reports about back on this one. There's one person that actually emailed me being like, hey, what was that primer you used? It didn't break me out and all primers always break me out. I'm just like, interesting. It was no problem. Or the Professional. <laughs> all these poor puns. This is an essential setting spray that I use on most clients. This is the Scandinavia Bridal setting spray. It's very similar to the Urban Decay All Nighter. I actually do have one, but this is the D Slick. This is the one I use for, for oily folks. This one I kind of use on everybody, actually. Uh, but this one I use exclusively for oily folks. And then I actually have this almost empty bottle of Benai Final Seal. And then this full bottle of Final Seal, which are, is like a special effects, super intense, like um, theater grade setting spray. It's, it smells like mouthwash. It is makes your makeup bulletproof. I actually won't use this on bridal clients often unless it's like a 90 degree wedding. And even then I probably won't use it. I'll, I'll probably just lay on an extra amount of this. I also use this on most clients as well. This is Mac Fix Plus. This is just a lavender scent. It doesn't matter which scent you get. They're all fine. But I use this one to take down the look of powderiness on my clients and to make them more dewy. It's one of those products that I can't do a job without. Like I feel lost without it. This is a new addition to my kit. It's the Iconic London Prep Set Glow Setting Spray. It's actually really fun to shake up and like, look at the swirls it makes. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> then I've got this Smashbox Primer Water that's almost all gone. It's just like a good all-over setting spray. This is actually a really fun setting spray, too. This is the Morphe Continuous Mist setting spray. A nice, long-lasting, all-over-the-face continuous setting spray mist. I love, it's actually really nice. I love it. This one I'm just kind of trying to use up. Also, something I got in the BoxyCharm. This is the Tarte Ready Set Radiant. A, a fine, good setting spray, but not a must-have. I've, I've let you know about some of my must-haves. Probably my three main go-tos are these three. These are my probably my three favorites. This one's kind of nice to have for those really extreme instances where you really need it to last, need things to last. I ha this is actually kind of new to me. This is the Milani Make It Last setting spray, but it seems to be really good. I have, I don't, as you can see, this is just a mini and I've only used this much of it. I feel like it does make your makeup last longer. I need to use it all up before I know for sure, but if I do use it up and I use more setting sprays up, I think I might repurchase it because it seems to be really good for a drugstore. Brand new, I haven't opened it yet. This is the Bare Minerals Dew Mist. 
Then I have a Fenty Pro Filter Mini Primer. The MAC Strobe Cream. This is the one, this is the Peach Light Strobe Cream. The Cover Effects Blurring Primer, which I never use. And then down here I have a kind of couple like mixing cleaning things. And sometimes in here I'll have I just used up my beauty so clean, which so that's why it's not in here because it's all used up. But I have a new one. I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna add it in here until the next time I have a big event to do. And sometimes I'll have like a tiny brush cleaner in here too, especially for bigger events. Today I just had a single client, so I do bring all this stuff with me to all my clients, but even though it's definitely overkill, but. I don't know. I like to be prepared, you know? You never know what's gonna pop up. Today, I didn't think I was gonna do a gel eye, cat eye, so I didn't bring any cat eye eyeliner brushes. And lo and behold, that's exactly what I ended up doing. But I was able to make it work with some, some other stuff. This um, bag, I think this is just like a Zuka bag. I have a ton of these, but I don't use these in my Zuka kit as much as I should, which is funny. I tend to use like these other weird shaped bags instead. But uh, this is one that I can't do my job without. I have to have this particular bag to be able to do my job because this is where I keep my beauty blenders. These are used. Whoops, I have to go wash those. <laughs> but I, I like to have a couple extra in here, especially a couple extra little minis just in case I end up doing more people than I need or need them for different things or what have you or I put too much powder on one of them or something like that. But I have a bunch of beauty blenders in there, essential kit tool. Could get away with doing a goo goo without a beauty blender, but it would just be harder. Beauty blenders are especially essential for, say, you gave somebody too much coverage, they didn't like how much makeup you put on them, and you can use a beauty blender to really uh, wipe some of it off and thin it out and like make it a little bit more skin-like, press it into the skin nicely and make it more skin-like. We have a couple of gel eyeliners. This Inkblot eyeliner is the blackest gel eyeliner on the market. So I also keep this pretty vulgar one, which just comes in this, in this adorable Inkwell container, but this one's smoother and goes in really nice and smooth and beautifully. So I like having a nice smooth one in the kit at all times. This is almost all gone, but this is my Smashbox 24 hour photo finish shadow primer, really excellent shadow primer, as is the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion. This is just a mini in the original, and this is gonna last me forever even though it's just a mini. I we got the NYX pigment primer. This is nice to have for glitter looks or more pigmented looks. I also have a Too Faced glitter glue, which when I do Glitter Lux I'll usually use, I uh, might as well mention that now, I like to, I have these little baggies where I keep all my glitters inside, my Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow, I don't need to use a primer with this stuff, I can kind of just slap that on on any old primer, so, but I do have a ton, and I have a bunch of Pinky Rose ones here too, I could get away with just having Kitten Karma, and then maybe like, do you use Smoldering Satin quite a bit? These colorful ones, these are just for me. <laughs> these are just for fun. Actually, the gold one comes in handy. This is the Urban Decay Heavy Metals Gold. And then this is a Makeup Forever, like shimmer eyeshadow, but it's, it's pretty glittery. Oh, and then I bought like a bunch of minis in like a holiday set too. Those actually come in handy pretty nicely. Especially if you're somebody that likes to have a lot of these in hand, you'll never use one of these up, especially if you have a bunch. So it's nice to have the minis. But I say, if you wanted to have some glitters in your kit, I would probably get a gold, something pinky or champagne-y, pinky or champagne-y like that, like a white. You'll never use anything other than these. These are the ones I go for most. These like colorful ones, those are just for me. Those are just for fun. You know, once in a while you forget something when you go out to do a job, but you don't, something you don't want to forget because it's a missed opportunity for you to make some money because I, I charge extra for lashes, but lash glue, gotta have lash glue. So now I, so now I keep them kind of like all throughout my kit. I love the House of Lashes lash glue because it's like really long lasting. This one's almost empty. This is my backup. And then this is just another one that my boyfriend get, got me recently. Got a lash applicator. This comes in handy once in a while. Two styles of lash curlers. And these are both essential actually. These I kind of use, the Tweezer Man lash curlers are really, I used to have Revlon ones for a long time and then they fell apart. 
and these I've had these tweezer men lash colors I've had for like three years and they're still just as good as they were the first day these are really nice long-lasting lash curlers really good really good ones and this is I forget what brand this is but this is just like a this type of lash curler that you can kind of just they're really good for using on other people's lashes and they're especially good for pressing together lashes when you're trying to apply lashes on somebody if you're there's like a per certain part that's just not sticking right I love to have that on hand several pencil sharpeners those are absolutely essential nice to have a bunch because it's one of those things where just like you know you can never find a pencil sharpener when you need one so have a bunch so you can always find one yeah I got two tiny little scissors for cutting lashes in here. Three Anastasia brow pomades. I got medium brown, auburn, and chocolate, even though I never use these. I use the medium brown on myself a lot, but I never use them on clients. MAC soft ochre, which is something I don't use very often either, just because, I don't know, I think a lot of people that love this formed a habit for it early on in playing with makeup, and I did not. I've always used these guys. So I've kind of formed a habit for using these guys over this guy, and I just don't like to use this guy. I also have a Lorac primer in here, which I used to really love, but I think because I've had it for a while, the consistency is kind of different. I remember really liking the Lorac primer as well. Couple of random brow products, Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, the Brow Gel. I actually love this brow mascara, and this is new, the Mellow Tinted Brow Gel. Pair of Anastasia tweezers. These tweezers are so good. Probably the best tweezers on the market. King of Duraline from Inglot. This is pretty essential for softening up um, like, like a gel liner that's beginning to dry out or and softening up any kind of product that's beginning to dry out. Couple color correctors. This is a Dior one that I got in gratis and this is just a mini of the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. It's nice, but I haven't fallen in love with it in the way that Sam Rabindal has in a big- This I just used for the first time the other day. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I'm sure I'm gonna love it one day but I've only used it once so far so I don't I don't know yet. Needles No More No More Baggage, um, Eve Pearl Lip Balm which I'll slap on to people's lips when I'm prepping their lips for lip product. Really nice lip balm. Love it. Oh this is another gel liner from NARS but I should probably declutter this. This is probably old. I've only used it like once. And a Tarte Smooth Operator setting powder just in case. And then these are two Becca shimmering liquid highlighters from Becca. I also have a, I always keep a couple packets of tissues in here so I can wipe down lipsticks after I sanitize them or eyeliners or what have you or I don't know there's a million things that tissues come in handy for. If you're doing somebody's eyeliner and they start to tear up give them a tissue, different things. This Marc Jacobs little bit boxy bag thingy I used to have mini lipsticks in here, but now I'll keep my disposables in here. And I have like disposable mascara wands in here. I just have like these pointed Q-tips in here, double-ended pointed Q-tips. These are great for like putting on lips if you needed to. A package of shadow shields, which I don't use a ton, but I'm starting to get into using them more often. Especially if I'm like trying out a palette that I haven't used on clients a ton, but I've already done their face. I might use a shadow shield in that situation. Or if I'm doing something really dark and smoky, I might use a shadow shield. And then in here I have like lip wands, super fine little Q-tips, comes super in handy too. A couple bobby pins, more mascara wands. It's just filled with dis disposables to the brim. Okay, palettes. So this is probably what you guys came here for. But I used to only keep just this one big bag of palettes with me, but I've, re I've been expanding. I've been bringing the two palettes with me, but I tend to switch out what palettes I bring, but a lot of these palettes I bring to every single gig with me, so I'll, I'll identify that as it comes. This is a new addition to my collection. This is the Persona, De Persona Identity Palette. It's actually a really gorgeous bridal palette. And these shimmers are gorgeous. I actually used it today on a client. These palettes get flock on the internet for being boring, but I think that they are essential palettes for bridal and for special events, so I use them all the time. These are the Lorac 1 and the Lorac 2. 
So as you can see, pretty well loved. The reason I use them for bridal so often is because these are such like go-to colors for creating like those romantic, soft, shimmery, but like not overly done looks. And this one actually does have pan in it. I use this shimmer on a ton of clients and I, I actually really want to replace these, but this one's almost got pan on it, the taupe color there too. Getting close. Over here, I've got my two Visart palettes. This one I actually don't use on clients that often. Usually, maybe a little bit around the fall, but this is the Dark Matte palette. This one's a little bit more essential. Um, this is the Visart Neutrals matte, Matte's palette. And yeah, this one is really nice pigmented, big, nice big pans. I use it for color correcting a lot, actually. Especially these lighter color shades down here. This is uh, my Tartise Pro pro to go. I don't use it a ton. I used to use it a lot more. These are a nice, a handful of nice go-to shades. Nice little travel palette. Actually, this would be a nice one to keep inside of a purse. Maybe I will do that soon. This smells like chocolate. New addition to my collection. This is the Dose of Colors Blushing Berries palette. A couple nice mattes in there. Prized possession that and something that I kind of like need to have in my kit at all times. But I love these. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit palette. Uh, I think this is the one from two years ago. Still works. And I've hit pan on this one. And these two blushing shades, they're just so essential. Like these are just beautiful blush shades and they work with so many skin tones. And this bronzers, like the most, the I don't really like luminous bronzers, but I like this one. This one's really pretty. So that's a pretty luminous bronzer. And these are nice like, bridal highlights that are, aren't too intense, but they just kind of give you like that glow from within. It's such a beautiful palette. I like to get another one of these palettes to replace this one because I've had this one for a while and I kind of still want to have another one. I wish I wa I wish I could buy this one because the new one that came out for this holiday isn't as pretty as this one. This one's perfect. This one has the ones that I, the shades that I want in it. I want them to bring this one back. <laughs> or even the one that they had last year that I missed out on. I wanted to buy the one from last year because I had one of those metallic highlighters in it. But here's another essential tool for uh, like that I need to bring this with me on every gig. I use this ambient lighting setting powder on most of my brides to give them like the that like glowing from within kind of look. Essential, 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 essential. I always bring these three Anastasia palettes with me, pretty much in every gig. The shimmers in this um, Mario palette are so incredible. They still impress me when I put them on folks. To this day, Anastasia Renaissance, she's pretty well loved. She's got some pan. And then Soft Glam is such an essential palette for bridal and special event. She's pretty well loved too, but no pan quite yet, but Burnt Orange is getting low down, pretty low down. I still bring Kat Von D Shade and Light because I, I still use it. She's got a little bit of pan on that and there aren't brightening, brightening shades that are quite like this anywhere else in my collection. Well, this is a new addition to my collection. I just got this in a boxy charm a couple months ago. I'm trying to see if this would function in the same space as the Kat Von D Shade and Light. This is a kind of new addition to my collection. I got this at IMATS this year. This is the Kevin Aquan um, contour palette and I am obsessed with these contour colors. These are beautiful contour colors. These highlighters are actually pretty lame. They're pretty unimpressive. I keep trying to give them a shot and these continue to underwhelm me, but this blush is nice too. Oh, this is actually a beautiful palette that I love to take with me to bridal gigs, especially prom for prom season, because for prom and even for on some bridesmaids, they like to have like extraordinary shimmers in there once in a while. And this palette has some extraordinary shimmers and some nice rosy mattes in here too. So this comes in handy quite a bit. Here's like a, a Tarte blush palette. I used to use this a lot more. I don't use it quite as much anymore. I, I kind of have my favorite blushes that I kind of gravitate towards, but I used to use this a lot more. I still reach for it once in a while, but but it is nice to have like a nice blush palette here. Anastasia Beverly Hills Pro Brow Palette. This is pretty essential. I use this pretty often. I tend to use it for the medium brown and the dark brown the most though. Um, a lot of artists will only use this um, as their like brow product in their kit. As you can see, mine's kind of gently used. Like I said, 
I use the medium brown and the dark brown the most. I don't really use the other colors as much, but maybe I will in the future, we'll see. And this has, this Cheek Parade palette actually gets a ton of love from me in this kit. I dig into these bronzers. I go back, I actually tend to mix these two bronzers together a lot for a lot of clients, especially paler clients. Uh, Hula Light is the my go-to bronzer for very fair people. Dandelion is a beautiful, like very neutral pink blush. And it actually smells really nice. I don't use these luminous ones as much. I, I'm still kind of like beginning to kind of warm up to the idea of luminous blushes. Even though F Becca Flower Child is one of my favorites, but it's not that luminous. It's just got like a tiny hint of sparkle. Between the these three shades alone, I reach for this palette almost every single time I do a gig. And yeah, you can kind of see the love. You can see that there's some dips in there. Okay, so here's my second palette bag. So first off, we have this Sonia Kashuk, pa Sonia Kashuk palette that is supposed to be like a dupe for the Visar palette. And I bought this palette being like, oh, I want that Visar palette, but $80. And this one's $20. And this one's fine, but it's definitely a lot less pigmented than the Visar palette is. And for the longest time, I used this one more often because the amount of pigment in the Visar palette was a little bit intimidating for me, but now I've gotten really used to it. So I prefer that one now, but in the beginning, because this one was less pigmented, I gravitated towards it more. But I still use this one quite a bit, and I will throw it into my special effects kit once in a while, just because just it's like a nice neutral matte palette. You know, neutral matte shades come in handy for a lot of things all the time. Here we have a sleek highlighter palette, really blingy highlighters. I used to be really pumped about this. I was, I coveted this palette for so long and I finally got it. Damn, does it shine though? It used to be, feel a lot more wet. Now it's not, it feels a lot drier, probably because I've had it for a while. Not that long though. Not as long as I've had this palette. It's the Jaclyn Hill Becca Collab face palette. Really beautiful. I use it for the highlighters quite a bit. I don't use the blushes as much, but I'm actually trying to get a little bit more use of them because the truth is I'm probably gonna have to uh, retire this palette soon, even though Champagne Pop has got a pretty good dip into it, but never really used it as much as I probably should have, honestly. These two ColourPop palettes are some of my, f two of my favorite ColourPop palettes and I keep them in my kit. The shimmers in this Dream Street palette are pretty extraordinary and it's nice to have a couple pops of color palettes just in case, you know, out of nowhere one of your clients wants a little bit of color. So I love that. I love this palette. This is one of, this is probably one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. And this I think of Love I Love You palette from ColourPop. Extraordinary shimmers, nice neutral palette, really kind of comes in handy for like glam event, special event looks. This is kind of like a better version of Urban Decay Naked. You know, Urban Decay Naked was popular because nobody had seen such a user-friendly, high-quality palette like that. But these shades are a little bit more modern, you know. Back then, we didn't have a sense of what a utilitarian palette looked like. This is a pretty utilitarian. It's got a really nice dark black, a bunch of really extraordinary shimmers and a bunch and a couple like transition shades that are like really nice too. So love this palette. This is an excellent one. Becca Chrissy Teigen palette. Um, I actually use this a lot to give to clients. So because it's got a really nice mirror in it, and I give this palette to clients to for them to use the mirror. But these highlighters are extraordinary, and this is one of my favorite bronzers of all time. This is the Becca Malibu Soleil bronzer. As you can see, it's kind of got a, quite a bit of love in there. And I love it. And when I bought this palette, I didn't know who Chrissy Teigen was. She made a really good palette. I, I picked it because I like the colors in it and it ended up counting for something. This is my Linda Halberg Infinity D palette. I bought it because of this rich red. This is supposed to be a face palette for deeper skin tones. I haven't actually used it a ton on deeper skin tones. I have used this Umbra shade as a contour, and I've been, I, I've loved this red shade. And I do need to use it a little bit more. I got it last year during holiday. Another Ling Linda Halberg's, Linda Halberg palette. This is just like the Enchanted, look how beautiful. Are you kidding me? An extraordinary little highlight palette. I don't use this on clients a ton because the colors are so different. These are kind of like eyeshadow toppers, right? 
because I can't imagine using this as a highlighter. It's just kind of like a beautiful blue glimmer. A little glimmer. This Carly Bible palette is actually really lovely for... It has some really lovely bridal colors in there. And it's really nice for prom clients who are new to makeup and just kind of want something romantic. The highlights are really nice here too, like a nice little variety of shades to suit a bunch of different skin tones. Really fair to really deep, nice highlighters. So I actually really love this Carly Bible palette. Even though there, I go through stints where I just don't even use it for like three months, at a time. I can't get rid of it because it's it's so beautiful. It's so well thought out um, and it's so Carly Bible. The Jaclyn Hill palette I tend to bring to a ton of my gigs as well. If I ever forget to bring a palette, I probably will have a color that will work in this palette. This is kind of like been a saving grace here and there. Sometimes I think I'm just like, ah, oh, I don't use this palette very much, but it seems like every single shade has been dipped into, so that counts for something, I suppose. ColourPop in Nudendo. I don't, I haven't used this one a, a ton, but um, I got it because Jake Hissa, like, raved about it. I should really play with these. This shade is really interesting, really coppery. That's pretty. The Cover Effects Medium Deep Palette. I got this in a boxy term and um, I got the medium deep rather than the light shade, but I do love the finishing powder as a br blush. On me, it's a beautiful peachy blush. So I keep it around because I love, I kind of really love that. Speaking of blushes that I love, I've been loving this Alomar palette. I kind of love mixing all three. These are gorgeous. And I like to have this Moon Dust palette around just as like a, just to give like a look a little bit of extra sparkle, extra sheen. I love this palette. I tend to bring it to prom gigs especially, but I'll bring it to like any gig just cause you never know when a little extra glimmer, a little extra sheen can come in handy. And this is the Tardis Pro Glow palette that I got in a BoxyCharm a while back. I've only used it a handful of times, but I've really liked it. I've really enjoyed the blushes and highlighters and the bronzers in here, so. This one does not smell like chocolate, but it is nice. I like it. And back here, I got two palettes that couldn't fit into either one of those bags, so. I don't always bring this palette because it's so bulky, but the Smashbox Masterclass palette, and it's got a little bit of everything in here, but I especially reach for it for the color correcting shades. I don't have really a spread of color cor correctors anywhere else in my collection. I have under eye cor color correctors that I keep in the eye bag that I showed you earlier, but I keep I take this one along just in case I I'm doing like a bigger, brighter party and I suspect that I might need to do a little bit of color correcting. I bring this guy along and I've been messing around with the um, contour shades a little bit more lately. I, I've, I even put this palette in my project pan. Can't get myself to use these shadows. I have to, at the end of this year, I am going to declutter this so hard. And this is my Morphe 350. If you, if there's ever a shortage of warm browns, it will be right here. So there's only one last category to show you, I think, and that's just lips. So this is my lip bag. I will bring other colors along if I feel like I'll need to, but for most gigs, this is what I bring. I bring my whole spread of lip pencils. Those are especially really essential. These are all my nudes. I love these Makeup Forever artist ones a lot. I even love, I have a bunch of um, the older Makeup Forever ones too. Oh yeah, this one's almost all gone. Here's a ColourPop one. I love these Marc Jacobs, makeup, Marc Jacobs ones. They are so bridal and they're so incredible, but packaging always craps out on me towards the end and they're so expensive. So I don't, I don't know if I can keep buying them, because, but if anybody knows, of like a color dupe and maybe even a formula dupe of the Marc Jacobs uh, Primrose, especially Primrose, but also Slow Burn lip liners. Leave that down below in the comments because I love them so much and I've repurchased Primrose twice and it's like, it just craps out on me at the end. It just like breaks and it's so hard to keep it in a kit because it's like, it's hard to sanitize it without breaking it. They're so beautiful on brides. I, I need to have that color on my brides. And I'm upset. This has be turned into a 
hard fast favorite too. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat and Hot Gossip. That has been one that I've been loving in my brides a lot lately. And then over here we have some more reds and berry lip liners. My favorite lip, red lip liner is MAC Cherry. That is an essential. This Elamasco one is really nice. The NYX ones are nice. People say that the NYX ones are like comparable to the MAC ones. I don't know. I feel like they're like drier and harder. I don't know. That's just me though. So I have a couple lip palettes. Um, wary of showing you guys. I think I'll just show you this guy, this side, because it's a little less messy looking than the other side, but I just have a bunch of deep powdered lipsticks in here. Uh, mostly Marc Jacobs. Marc Jacobs is, is like my main lipstick formula that I love to use in my brides. This one is like a new lipstick palette. It's just got a handful of Dior ones in here, so I'm probably gonna put some other shades in there soon. This I have to throw away. It's probably too gross to keep in here, but the Smashbox 25 year anniversary lip palette. This, I think this used to be every color that Smashbox had, and I think they've got new colors now, especially now that they have that great liquid lipstick formula. Actually, this color Phil I've used quite a bit. I tend to bring these lip glosses to pretty much every gig. Glosses have been big for bridal. I actually have given away a lot of my smaller lip glosses. I, I, used, to, I used to have a ton of minis like these. Just throughout the year, if I had a bride and like I'm finishing up really quickly, I tend to just kind of give her that mini lip gloss. So one of the minis I actually repurchased because I missed it so much. I gave away... NARS Chelsea Girls, and there's NARS Chelsea Girls, beautiful color. I love this Becca Creasy Teigen one, it smells like mint, I love that one. Buxom Dolly, Buxom White Russian, Buxom Instigator, Fenty Glow, that one's an essential one. I don't feel like I'm running low on that one even though I've had it all year long and I've used it quite on quite a few clients. It doesn't seem like it's running out or anything like that, so that, that's nice. A new favorite this year is this Nominee Cosmetics Lemonade. Peach tea lip gloss. Put these. Oh, this is Marc Jacobs Sugar Sugar. I haven't used that one quite a, that much. A lot of people have just been loving on this one, but I haven't. I don't know. I haven't been inclined to use it quite as much. Oh, and I got a Mac Clear Lip Glass, but I don't use this one a ton, honestly. Okay, just kidding. I have one more thing I want to show you, and this is just not something that I always bring. But this is just like a little thing of a couple ColourPop good eyeshadows in here. But I keep a bunch of glitters and uh, pigments in here. So I got MAC Vanilla, which I use once in a while. A bunch of the Makeup Forever Starlit powders. These are really beautiful like on the eyes and also as highlights. Underrated. A um, couple of Makeup Forever glitters are in here too. Another MAC Pigment. English Gilt. That actually looks beautiful. I don't know if I've ever used this MAC glitter, but this is beautiful too. A NYX glitter. A couple Kat Von D glimmer veils. I actually was loving the Ciate eye luster for a moment and like um, during prom season this year. I was using this quite a bit and I was loving it. And a little NYX liquid clear crystal liner. This actually was more in handy than I thought I ever would, but it's actually a really beautiful kind of glitter. It's, um, it's got a lot, of, a lot of orange and blue reflex in it, so I love that. So, like I said, I don't always bring those, but if I think I'm gonna need glitters or pigments, uh, like for in like a prom situation, I will bring these. So this is for real the last, last bit. I just wanted to mention a couple other palettes that I didn't bring with me to my gig today, but these are often palettes that I'm liable to bring with me on gigs. I actually haven't brought this one too often out, but this is the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. Some lovely bridal shades in here too, especially for deeper skin tones. Desi and Katie Fernication palette, gorgeous shimmers and gorgeous mattes in here. Anastasia Aurora palette, some shimmery colorful highlighters, those are lovely. Some of my Morphe blush palettes. If I'm doing like a big spread of uh, bridesmaids, I might bring some of these blush palettes with me. This is a bronzer palette. This one I'll take on set with me just in case I have like a deeper skin tone actors that I need to... I'll use some of these as a setting powder on like deeper skin tones. And uh, this is the 35B, 9B blush palette. Gorgeous um, colors for deep skin tones. Moonchild uh, is a classic, beautiful, classic, amazing, colorful highlighter palette for colorful prom looks, and such. Anastasia Gleam. I don't always bring them to every gig, 
but if I feel like I'm gonna do a lot of bronzy looks, I'll take this one. This is probably, the Sun Dipped is probably my most used. I love Gleam. And actually, I got Sugar earlier this year and one of these shades is broken, so I'm careful to ever, I love sun Sunburst, but Sunburst is also in this one, I think, yes. Here it is. For some reason it's like stronger in the Gleam palette. Anyway, for some high-end weddings with a little color, I am liable to bring some of these bigger Natasha Denona palettes. These are extraordinary shimmers, but they're colorful, so. But they're not completely colorful. Like these are nice neutral shades, nice rosy tones. This one's actually got quite a few neutral colors, some taupe colors and stuff like that in there too. And Natasha Denona Gold is absolutely stunning. But I might use this on like a New Year's look or something like that. This is so beautiful. And this uh, Ofra Pro palette. I think this is kind of really geared towards makeup artists. And I've, I've brought this to a couple of gigs, but I'm very careful every time I bring it to a gig because I've heard that these these highlights are so airy and soft and beautiful that they're liable to break. So I'm very careful with these whenever I take them out. You know, you can watch my palettes video if you want to see all my palettes. And depending on the kind of job we're working, I might bring one of those palettes along. But these are pr the, the brunt of the palettes I'm most likely to bring. Okay, we've almost got everything. The last thing I have to talk to you about is my airbrushing stuff, which is right here. And yeah, I don't always airbrush. Like I usually use my Makeup Forever foundations, but when I do airbrush, I do use the Temp2 system. I've been using it for like five years and it is really excellent. And I especially like that they offer these like tiny little artist sizes which is essential because that way you can buy all the shades and only repurchase the ones that you run out of and maybe if you don't run out of the, the sh any shades then you don't need to repurchase them. So uh, I actually did repurchase an entire new set this year because this is the first one I had from like four years ago and most of the, sh the shades are all gone and the rest are just, uh, I don't know, leaky and old. But this one's a brand new one that I used for the first time today. I really do love this formula. It's really long lasting and it looks very skin-like and it's very beautiful and glowy. It looks skin-like. It's actually really interesting because I'll be airbrushing somebody and I'll be laying on the color and it's hard to tell that there's even makeup on because it looks so much like skin even though you're putting on a ton of makeup. It doesn't ever look makeup-y and it lasts so long, you don't really need to set it. But I tend I tend to set it anyway because I like to, even though this does, this system does come with like concealers and powders and the whole deal, um, or no, concealers and like blushes, even though I never use the blushes or the highlighters or anything like this. It also comes with a concealer wheel. I've barely used the concealer wheel. It's all about the foundations for me. Well, there are some browners in here. And the gun, the airbrush gun is really actually nice. This is a beautiful case, by the way. This is the nicest like airbrush gun case I've ever had. And just about everything fits in here. It comes with this bottle of cleaner, which is very essential. Like before I pack down at the end of the gig, I run a little bit of this cleaner stuff into it. And you know, the reason that this makeup is so long lasting is because it's silicone based. So if you sweat into it or anything like that, it's not gonna budge you because you're gonna need something silicone-y to break it down. So this has got some like silicone breakdown ingredients into it. I got my air gun and what is really nice about it is the compressor. This is the airbrush compressor and so little. They say that it can, you can charge this component and it will power this component so it can be batter, battery powdered, but that's really iffy. It tends to not work for me in the battery powered way. Sometimes it does, but I have to kind of really prepare for that. I usually just plug it into the wall. DC adapter right here. And yeah, I think I will continue to buy Temp2 makeup because it's beautiful and it does, it is really long lasting. So it's perfect for bridal and for many other things, for male grooming even, because it's so natural looking and so long lasting. So that is it, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this one. I actually thought this was really fun to share with how I work and what I keep in my kit and what I love. Now, a few of the, the challenges of, that I faced when building the kit. So I've 
proposed a bunch of questions to you guys throughout the course of the video. I actually really love watching these uh, makeup kit videos, so if you have one, let me know. I will probably check it out. Especially if you have any Marc Jacobs lip liner dupes or some really good universal concealer formulas that I could probably incorporate into my kit. Or maybe even some more foundation, affordable foundation formulas that I could maybe think about adding to my kit. As much as I love Makeup Forever HD, I'm probably gonna keep using it for years and years. I am interested in seeing what else is comparable out there and seeing what else could work. Especially that something that's like affordable and long lasting and really bridal. I guess there's nothing left to say. Thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, my brand new merch is available and I'll leave a link down below if you would like to check that out. Check out my artwork videos in case you want to score some free artwork. I'm giving away artwork. Let me know down below what else you'd like me to make for you anytime soon. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. Until next time, cheers. Bye!